welcome to part 13 of the Red Special online video tutorials. Uh, in the last episode we were looking at uh, the finer details of the uh, body to finish off before screwing it together as well as gluing it. Uh, this will be picked up in a few weeks time or a few episodes time I should say. Um, but for now back by popular demand is um, the neck building tutorials as you can see from the last part which was part 7 we uh, cut the headstock and also we did the underside of the headstock um, we rounded that out to uh, the heel as you can see here uh, it still needs to be adjusted slightly um, but we'll get round to that eventually towards the end um, also today what we'll be doing as well is the, uh, the actual thickness of the neck as you can see it's still a block piece uh, which still needs uh, to be cut down which I have marked on the other side here you go you can see the pencil line um, obviously it's not going to cut to the, uh, the neck joint it's going to go down a little bit uh, into a curve um, which I'll draw on in just a few minutes as you can see it goes all the way up to the uh, heel of the neck where it blends into the back of the uh, headstock um, basically we'll cut this with a bandsaw or handsaw or a jigsaw or whatever you have and um, and then we'll concentrate on the profile and the, uh, the actual neck before shape. cutting the underside of the neck I've decided to cut off a little bit uh, of the actual joint itself on the neck uh, this is because I made it too long in the first place um, cutting this amount off will ensure it fitting into the sort of neck pocket on the body um, thus getting accurate measurements and lining up where it's supposed to be uh, fitted and bolted to the uh, body which still needs to be done Okay, after a bit of marking up with the pen, we've uh, marked out the the amount it will go uh, will recess into the uh, the joint at the front of the oak core. We've also cut off the excess we don't need at the end of the joint. The bulk of the uh, the underside will be cut with the bandsaw. Uh, this will be shaped afterwards um, to what is believed is the Red Special's uh, neck profile. As you can see, after a little bit of uh, bandsawing, we've actually done the, uh, the curve of the neck into the body there. And as you can see, I've left about five or six mil flat piece there uh, which uh, will go inside of the body it sort of hides the joint as it were um, there's a bit in the uh, bottom oak which is recessed back uh, about five millimeters or so um, so it will hide basically the whole of the neck joint um, we'll continue along the neck with the bandsaw up to the neck uh, it should take a while as it's quite hard on the blade and uh, obviously it's a hard wood so it'll take a while to get through
Okay, as you have just seen, uh, the majority of the cutting of the underside of the neck has been completed. Now if I turn this over and show you, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but as you can see, it has been uh, cut along the underside. As you can see, I've stopped around uh, the headstock area. This is because the uh, the guard on the bandsaw won't lift any higher, so I can't cut any further and uh, reduce the uh, the heel on the underside, uh, which houses the uh, truss uh, truss rod adjuster. Uh, what I'll do is I will cut this down using a router and uh, gently. Um, Simply uh, recess it so it uh, just blends nicely into the back of the uh, headstock. After this, <coughs> goes on to the uh, the neck shaping. Um, I've read on my forum or the Red Special uh, Library forum how do you shape a neck and what tools to use. Uh, before a couple of years ago, when I made my other guitar neck for uh, Mark 4 or 5, can't remember now. <coughs> I used a, um, a router to take off the majority of the material. And here is that router bit which I used to cut the edges of the, uh, the neck. As you can see, it's sort of uh, got a rounded profile to it as well as a, a guide on the underside so it follows the uh, the side of the neck. As you can see as I mentioned before it has a rounded cutter edge so basically what it does is it cuts uh, a nice sort of uh, rounded side to it so it takes off most of the material. Um, after this I'd probably use hand tools. Uh, somebody did say why not use the spoke shave. Um, generally you don't have much control over a spoke shave and uh, as the name suggests, it's used to make uh, spokes on wheels or chair legs or or whatever. Uh, I generally would suggest not using one of them, but to use uh, hand tools like a rasp file, which uh, I have read is probably the best tool for the job. It may take a little longer, but uh, at least you get uh, at least you know what you're getting and you can control it uh, quite easily. Um, there are general, other general ways of doing it. You can use it with uh, routers, um, or do it with routers and uh, other forms of equipment. Uh, but generally, I find that it's better to use a rasp file. Um, it gives you more control, and you can do uh, what you want to do with it, and uh, have more control over it. So the results are what you expect. As mentioned before, um, I'm going to do some routing on the last area which remains to be cut around the headstock, which is this area here. I've cut up to the point I can get up to with the uh, bandsaw, and this bit down here is going to get uh, routed. As you can see, I've got two blocks of wood either side, which are at an angle, so we can gently go into the uh, Headstock. Um, you're doing this with a router and uh, quite a big uh, router bit, but that's up to you, uh, whatever you want to use.
Okay, as you have just seen, we've done some routing around the headstock area. As you can see, it's now the same uh, level as the uh, bit we cut uh, the other day. Uh, as you can see, there's still quite a bit of work to do around the sides there, which need to be taken back a bit. And then uh, this part here will need to be uh, uh, just a beveled edge and blend into the back. And uh, then the rest of the work can go on shaping the neck, as you can see, which will be in the next part of the, uh, the video. Okay, a little bit of added information onto the video. Um, to do the, uh, the heel of the neck or the part that blends into the back of the headstock, as you can see there, um, usually what I do is I use a chisel to uh, um, bring it back and make it blend into the back of the headstock uh, nicely. Um, but I don't use a normal flat file as uh, as many people will know. I was told a couple of years ago about these uh, chisels that have a sort of U shape to them. I can't remember who it was who told me but uh, I have a couple here. A large one and a small one. As you can see it's got sort of a U shaped profile to it. And this sort of um, helps um, when you're trying to uh, curve the, uh, the parts on the back of the uh, headstock and uh, it blends it in quite nicely and enables you to get into the sort of corners of the uh, the part that you're trying to uh, smooth over 